Hi, my name is Andrew Munson, and I'd like to welcome you to another Tech Talk by Frontier Precision. This video is part of a series of Tech Talks in which we will be covering the Kogo tools inside of Trimble Access. Kogo in Trimble Access stands for Coordinate Geometry. The Kogo tools are part of an included library of tools inside of Trimble Access. These tools can be used to perform a variety of calculations with your survey data. These calculations can be performed during your survey or when you are not in a survey as well. The Kogo library is located within General Survey in the top right corner. When you click on the tile, you will be able to see all of the tools that are available to you. In today's Tech Talk, we are going to be covering the Compute Points tool. Compute Points allows the user to compute coordinates of new points in the field on their data collector. These points can be computed based on existing points, lines, and arcs. You can also use your current position while calculating these points. These new points can then be stored within your job and then used as a stakeout point. They will also be visible on your map. This tool is very useful for calculating offsets or search coordinates. One thing to keep in mind is that the coordinate system should not be changed after points have been computed. When the coordinate system is changed, the new points may not reference the new coordinate system. The Compute Point tool is located in the Kogo menu shown here. To use this tool, you will need some data in your project. My project here has a few points that have been measured using some GNSS gear. This can also be done with total station data. Open the Kogo menu and select the Compute Point tool. No matter what method we use to compute the point, we will always start by entering a name and a code for the point that we are about to compute. Below that, we have the drop-down menu for the method used for computing the point. Anytime you need to enter a point in these menus and you are currently in a survey, you can tap the right arrow beside the box to bring up the pop-up menu. You can then select Fast Fix to use your current position for the calculation. The first method we will be using is the bearing and distance method. Bearing and distance is one of the most commonly used methods for computing points. It can be computed using radial or sequential measurement methods. The graphic below shows the difference between the two methods. When sequential is selected, the start point field is automatically updated to the last stored intersection point. Enter in your new point name. The code is optional, but recommended. In the start point field, tap on the arrow to bring up the pop-up menu to select either radial or sequential measurement method. Select your start point. Then select your azimuth origin. This can be either grid zero, true north, magnetic north, or sun. Sun can only be used when in a GNSS survey. Then enter in the azimuth and the horizontal distance. To change the computed azimuth, enter in a delta azimuth. The computed azimuth will then be updated. Tap calc to calculate the new point. Then tap store to finish. The next method we will look at covers the turned angle and distance method. This method allows the user to compute points based on the direction of a line. You can then turn off of that line to create the point. This is commonly used to create offsets. This method can be used radially or sequentially as well. Name and code the new point. Then select turned angle and distance from the method dropdown. Enter in a start point and end point for the line that will be used. Next, enter the turned angle off of that line that your point will be computed. Then enter in your horizontal and vertical distances and calc the point. Click store to store the new point. The next method we will cover is the bearing distance intersect. This will compute the intersection of a point at a certain distance from one point and a direction from another. Name and code the new point. Then select bearing distance intersect. 
Enter in the point that you want to determine the direction of the intersection with. Then enter in the azimuth from that first point for the intersection. Next, enter in the point that you want to determine the distance of the intersection from. Then enter in the distance in this distance field. Then tap calc. When using this method, there are two possible solutions. If you are looking for the second solution, tap other at the bottom of the page. Then tap store. The next method we will look at is the bearing bearing intersect. This will compute the intersection of two azimuths from two points. Name and code the new point. Then select the bearing bearing intersect for your method. Enter in the point and azimuth from your first point. Then enter in your second point in azimuth. Click calc. Then store your point. The next method we will cover is the distance distance intersect. This method will compute the intersection based on distances to two points. This method computes two answers like the bearing distance intersect. Name and code the new point. Then select the distance distance intersect. Enter in the first point and distance from that point. Then enter in the second point and the distance from that second point. Tap calc. To see the other possible point, tap other at the bottom of the screen. Then store the point. The next method we will cover is the four point intersection. This allows us to compute a point based on the intersection of lines created from four different points. The lines that are created do not need to intersect, but they must converge at some point. Name and code the new point. Then select the four point intersection method. Enter in the start point of line 1. Then enter in the end point of line 1. Do the same for line 2. Tap the calc button, then store the point. The next method we will cover is the from a baseline method. This allows us to create a line, then place the point anywhere along that line, as well as compute offsets from that line. Name and code the new point. Then select from a baseline as your method. Enter in your start and end point to determine the line. Then enter in the distance and decide the distance direction method. There are four options to choose from. Enter in an offset and offset direction if you want to. Tap calc, then store the point. The next method we will cover is the project point to a line. This allows us to project a point that we have already surveyed to a position at a 90 degree angle along a line. This is useful for figuring out your position in relation to a line. Name and code the new point. Then select the project point to line method. Enter in the point you want to project to the line. Then if you have a line already created in the project, you can tap the right arrow to bring up the pop-up menu to select your line name from a list. If you are using two points, enter in the start and end point for your line. When you calc the point, you will be given the coordinates of the new point, the horizontal distance along the line, the horizontal and slope distance, 
azimuth, grade, vertical distance, delta north, and delta east. This all comes from the point you are projecting to the computed point. Tap store to store the new point. The next method we will cover is the project point to arc. This allows us to project a point that we have already surveyed to a position at a 90 degree angle on the arc. This is similar to the project to a line computation. Name and code the new point, then select the project point to arc method. Enter in the point that you want to project to the arc. Next, if you have an arc already created and stored in the job, you can select it from a list. If not, tap the right arrow to bring up the pop-up menu, then you can click key in and create your arc from this menu. Then click calc. Tap store to store your new arc, then click calc to project your point. This will compute the coordinates of the point, the horizontal distance along the arc, and the horizontal distance from the arc. Tap store to store the new point. In conclusion, we went over the Compute Points tool. There are many different ways to compute points in the project that were all outlined here. These tools will help you compute new points in the field and can be used in many different scenarios. That concludes our Tech Talk. We hope you found this beneficial and will join us again next time. Feel free to browse our collection of other helpful videos at FrontierPrecision.com. Thank you.